Good afternoon, Chomps. It's great to see you with us um, and for those watching online as well, um, you're welcome. And just a reminder um, to remember about social distancing and also about hand sanitising um, as well. Uh, we thank God for his faithfulness and we're going to praise God together now. Um, and just a reminder that um, as we do so, that congregational singing um, is prohibited at the moment. But we can still praise God from our hearts um, and respond to him. The words will be on the screen, so please feel free to, to stand if you wish or to raise your hands um, as we praise God together. So there's the signs that's rising up. Amen. Amen. Thank you that indeed your word 
declares that in heaven, even at this moment, around your throne, there are people from every nation and every tongue and every tribe praising you, declaring salvation belongs to our God. Hallelujah. And thank you, God, that we have a sense of that here among us, your church here on this earth, people from every nation, every tongue and every tribe. And Heavenly Father, we pray that God, we would indeed have a sense of heaven touching earth in this place where we are at this moment watching online. That we would be aware of your presence among us. Amen. I'm here to tell you about something very exciting coming up very soon. From the 15th to the 17th of September, we are calling you to three days of prayer and fasting. As we head into the autumn, we are sensing a significant shift and it's a call to God's people across Elim to stand in the gap and pray. On the mornings, we're going to have devotions and communion led online. Every day, the Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're asking you at midday to pray the Lord's Prayer over your community, your family, your frontline, your church. And as you do that, to maybe take a picture of yourself or a video and post it. Then on the Tuesday and the Thursday evening, we have live prayer. On the Tuesday the 15th, we've got a live prayer panel. Lots of guests coming to encourage us and teach us how to pray. On the Thursday evening, we're really, really excited about live prayer and worship with Elim for the kingdom for a fresh move of the Spirit. And leaders, we want to be able to pray and prophesy with you. And so there's going to be a Wednesday afternoon Zoom call where we get to minister to one another. We really believe that this is not the time to shrink back, but to stand strong, to stand firm, to stand in the gap, to pray and fast together. So come on, Elim. Let's pray. Amen. So please don't forget about that this Tuesday to Thursday for um, prayer and, and fasting. Um, on uh, Tuesday evening, our, our usual online prayer meeting won't be taking place on Tuesday evening uh, because we want as many people as possible on Thursday to join with us um, online on Thursday evening at half past seven till nine. Um, as we join um, together for worship and prayer online with the Elon family, not just in our nation here, but across, um, across our world. So, so please join us um, for that from Tuesday to Thursday. That would be great. Right, well, we have a special guest this week. Um, and actually, the special guest was here last week, but... I won't say any more because our special guest will be appearing in a moment. Who's in the box? I wonder. I know. It's Storm the Crow. And he's ready today, all tidy, ready to join with us. Let's give him a knock, shall we? to come out and show himself. There he is. There's Storm. Hello, everybody. Say good morning. Good morning, he said. He's very shy. He's really shy. Sometimes he's shy. He's been a good boy this week, he says. He remembers Pastor's talk from last week, and so he brought something. Is this true? Yes. He brought a lot, actually. He brought something to do with last week's talk. Where is it then? In the box. In oh, right. Okay. But they're toys. Pastor didn't talk about toys last week. He did. Let's have a look then. Wow, look at this. It's a car. It's, 
It's not a car, it's a transformer. Transformers in disguise. Oh, I see. But what's that got to do with Pastor's talk last week? He talked about Transformers? No, I don't think he did. Oh, yes, he did. Wow. I remember. I know what you were thinking about. Yeah, I remember now. Pastor talked about transformation. Not transformers, no, transformation. Oh, he says, look at this. You see, you see, Storm, these transformers, they're toys, and you can change them. But when you're finished with them, you can change them back. But what Pastor was talking about is when God comes to transform and change our lives. Oh, we don't put it back. We don't change one day and change back the next. Like the toys, we're changed, transformed. Whoa, that's a big word. So... These toys are nothing, although they look nice, they're nothing like what God does in people's lives. Oh, that's right. You see, when God does a work, when God transforms people, it affects their whole life. When you go to school, uh, all right, okay, I know you don't like school, but when you go to school, if you've got God in your life, it transforms, changes you to be different at home, at work, on the street, being neighbours, people that have got God in their lives through Jesus. It completely changes them, transforms them, yeah? And it transforms them to be like Jesus. Whoa, that's a thought. So... Will you allow God to transform you? Yeah. Will you allow God to transform you? Jesus to come into your life? But he still wants to play with his toys afterwards. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, I'm sure it is. Well, thank you, Storm. Thank you for coming and being a busy young man today. Twice in one day. Whoa! Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank God that God is still in the business of transforming life, of lives, of changing lives. And we're going to hear now um, a faith story. There we go, brilliant. So, um, would you like to introduce yourself first of all? Hello, hello, I'm Tommy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, <laughs> Great, Tommy. So, um, Tommy, what is it that you do? What? Um, what? I'm a paralegal. You're the what? Paralegal. Paralegal? Yeah. I don't know what it means either. I'm a <laughs> legal assistant, I guess. Okay. So, so. Okay, yeah. To, do, yeah. to do with legal matters. Yeah. 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 So, so, really, I need to be careful now, don't I? Um, no, 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 it's alright. Okay. <laughs> great, great, Tommy. Um, Tommy, I wonder what's what's your favourite um, favourite food that you like? Um, I don't discriminate, so I pretty much eat anything. <laughs> okay, that's great. That went down well. There we go. Depends on the weather. Depends on the weather. Depends on the weather. Yeah. Okay, whether it's salad or whether it's no, no salad is never. Is never okay, bad. okay, <laughs> okay. Um, Tommy, I wonder. Um, we're we're talking about faith um, and a faith story. But I just wonder if you um, can share what what life, what perhaps your life was like before coming to faith in Jesus. What what was what was your background? What was it like? Um, I think for me it was mostly about accountability, and the fact when I was younger, um, I would believe that the, the highest people I would really be accountable to would be my parents. Right. So yeah. really hiding stuff from them. If I was able to get away with it, then it didn't happen. And, uh, yeah. 
Um, but after I became a Christian, I think what really hit me the most is that there is a higher power that you have to be more accountable to. So just like Graham um, said, uh, Graham Will said, um, it's a thing where if you're, when you're transformed, you don't sort of transform out. And it's just a kind of um, a thinking that what would Jesus do? And if you can't think of what Jesus would do based on all the power, any parables you know or any of that, then you go to the Bible and just pray about it, kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so actually you had that uh, that um, that sense of accountability, that sense of being accountable to to your parents, um, but also then that sense of God, that awareness of God. Yeah. Um, so actually, what what brought you to that point of actually taking that step um, of of putting your faith and trust in Jesus? Um, I can't remember honestly. Um... I used to sleep at church a lot. I, I felt like my mom would remember. But then one day, I stayed awake for um, a sermon. And then it hit me That's that, <laughs> that I needed to get saved. And it wasn't a thing that I could sort of delay or or take my time with because life is really unpredictable as we've seen with this virus. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good. So there was that moment when actually you realised I had, I had to actually get my life sorted out. Yeah. Um, because actually I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, so I, I'm aware that you, um, you've you obviously to do what you're doing with legal matters, etc. I presume that you've had to study. Yeah, I studied. Yeah. For that, yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, so you were at university? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what was it, what was it like at university with, um, with your faith and... Um, luckily, there was a church that was five minutes away from me, so I was able, um, I was able to get there, make a community as fast as possible, which I would I recommend. Personally, I'm not a person that could like keep to a certain standard of um, keep well discipline is the word. So I think it helps to have friends that sort of motivate you yeah. and to keep the fire burning per se. Yeah. And I also think it's good to sort of also um, show, your, show, a lot, show a lot of your faith in action as well because most of the time people don't believe words. Um, so yeah, um, so that's what I just tried to do. I tried to act like Jesus would do yeah. as much as I could. Yeah. And when I didn't, I tried not to feel down about it and ask for his forgiveness and repent. Yeah, great, Tommy. And I think, I think that's so important. That's what, um, what church, church isn't about the building, yeah. it's about the people. Yeah. And I think that's so important what you just shared there about um, encouraging one another yeah. and about building one another up. Um, because actually, do you know what life, life happens, doesn't yeah, it? Sure. Um, and, and actually, as you just mentioned, you know, we, we um, sometimes mess up, we sometimes get things wrong. Yeah. Um, and that's how we need one another um, to actually encourage us. Um, and and actually to, to build us up um, as well. So, um, would you say that, well, how, how do you feel about your faith now, today? Um, what's, what's some of the, the challenges? What's some of the blessings? Yeah, I think they're definitely low points. I mean, I find they work in the week. Um, I'm always praying for their prayers before, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I feel like um, it, um, linking back to what I said about um, having a community. Yeah. Um, my, my faith does have its low points, and when it does, um, I tell someone like um, from university that I've gone through a lot with, then we chat about it. Yeah. Um, for what, um, a, a few weeks ago, I think I went to Coventry, and I was meeting meet a friend, and we were just talking about faith and how mad it was and everything that's going on in the world. And there are a lot of things going on in the world, and it's, um, it's understandable that it's hard to, to find faith, but um, I was really encouraged by what you said, just to keep your eyes on God, and not the people, but always on God. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, great, Tommy. Thanks very much. Jesus. 
Tuesday to Thursday, um, you will find all the details um, and information for that, um, and also to join in the prayer and fasting on the Elon Pentecostal Church's um, Facebook page, and also on the YouTube channel, um, Elon Pentecostal Churches as well. Um, last week we uh, were looking at transformation, and, and today we are we're continuing um, that theme. And last week we um, looked at someone who had quite a dramatic um, encounter with God, quite a um, dramatic transformation that took place um, in Genesis chapter 32. And we discovered that um, actually there was, a, there was a name change that took place as well. Um, and uh, we encountered Jacob, who um, had a wrestling match with, with God. Um, it lasted all night um, until daybreak and uh, we discovered that in verse 24 of Genesis 32 um, it says there that Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak and uh, we were sharing together how those words, um, Jacob was left alone, that sometimes that can seem quite a negative place to be in um, and, ha and in these challenging days that we're in um, there's some, some maybe feeling that isolation um, and that loneliness and yet God is still at work in those moments and for Jacob, God was still at work in his life, he was in the right place at the right time um, and God wanted him to be on his own because he had business um, to do with Jacob and we discovered how um, Jacob's identity um, was wrapped up in his name, which was um, the name Jacob meant liar, deceiver, um, and how actually the, the context of the passage in Genesis 33, he's going to be meeting his brother Esau, um, who actually he's cheated out of, of his birthright previously. Jacob doesn't know how this meeting's going to be. He's going to see his brother, who he's not seen for, for a long time. Um, and actually, God wants to do business in Jacob's life um, and to bring transformation. And there's the wrestling match that takes place. Um, and the, the man that's wrestling with Jacob pleads with Jacob, let me go, let me go. Um, and Jacob's like, no, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. There was that tenacity, there was that determination in Jacob's life. He knew that he needed God big time. Uh, for what lay ahead of him. Um, and of course, uh, we read in the chapter how, how God asks Jacob, the man asks Jacob, what's your name? <laughs> of course, he already knows, he already knows his name, but he wants Jacob to actually say the words, to say, my name's Jacob. Actually, do you know what? My identity, who I am, I lie, deceiver. And yet God takes him and God changes his name from Jacob to Israel, meaning that he contended with God, he wrestled with God, and God changed um, changed Jacob. And of course, we, we read in the passage how that transformation took place, and, and actually in that wrestling match, the man, God, actually ends up having to prod, um, prod Jacob in his hip um, in order for the wrestling match to stop. Um, <laughs> You're thinking, where's the referee at this point? Um, and God, God put, um, puts a finger in his head. And at that point, the wrestle match is over. Um, but from that point on, jo Jacob will walk with that limp. Jacob will be reminded of that encounter he had. But it wasn't just any ordinary encounter, but it was a transformation that took place in Jacob's life. His identity had been changed from liar, from deceiver. Um, into, the, uh, into the chosen one that God um, had chosen um, for, uh, for Israel um, and his name has changed to, to Israel. And we're going to hear now um, of someone else who actually had quite a dramatic 
change, dramatic transformation that took place. Um, someone who actually had their own, um, you could say, weaknesses, their own character defects. Um, and if we look at Luke, look at Luke, chapter 19, uh, it says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Um, and just at that point there, um, we read that yes, Jesus was going to, he had the destination, he was going to be passing through Jericho. But in, in his diary, so to speak, he had an appointment to meet with someone. Um, so this wasn't just going to be a, a simple passing through Jericho, but Jesus was going to meet with someone and that person was going to be transformed. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now immediately, um, those two things, immediately the fact that he was a tax collector um, would have made him very unpopular with those around, um, those around about there. Um, with the Jews, um, of course, the Romans were in power. He was a tax collector for the Romans, which would have made Zacchaeus very unpopular. Um, so you could say his character wasn't particularly a good one, and later on we discovered actually that he wasn't just a tax collector, but he, he also cheated people out of their taxes. He charged more tax than he should have. It says in verse 3, he wanted to see who Jesus was. And I think that's the key here. He had that desire to see Jesus. He'd obviously heard about Jesus, about who Jesus was, and he was just, I want to see Jesus. <laughs> I want to see this guy. But there was something stopping him. Um, and it goes on uh, to say that um, because he was short, he could, he could not see over the crowd. Um, so you could say that that was the barrier immediately, was of course all the crowds pressing in, Zacchaeus is sure, he's thinking, you know, how on earth do I see Jesus? So, so instead he decides to go home, call it a day, and think to himself, actually, do you know what, I'll try another time, try another place, um, and see Jesus then. No, he doesn't think that. He immediately thinks, do you know what, I'm determined I'm going to see Jesus no matter what. Um, and it says he ran ahead. I suppose that sign of desperation um, to meet, to, to see Jesus, whether he thought he would meet him was a different matter, but he wanted to see him. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. It says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Um, I think if I'd been Zacchaeus at that point, I'm not sure about coming down, I think I would have probably fallen out of the tree. I would have been that shocked um, that actually Jesus knew, Jesus didn't just speak to me, but Jesus knew my name. Um, and Jesus knew all about Zacchaeus. Um, Jesus knew the reputation that he had, and indeed the reputation went ahead of him, as we'll read in, in a moment. But it says, he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. There was no hesitation with Zacchaeus. It wasn't a case of, Jesus, do you know who I am? Obviously he did, because he called him by name. But do you know what sort of reputation I am? Why would you, you know, why do you want to come to my house? Zacchaeus didn't immediately think, oh, I've not washed the dishes, I've not tidied up, why would you? He immediately responds, and it says he welcomes him gladly. You know, God's looking for people who will welcome him gladly, despite um, what their um, faults may be, despite what their character defects may be. That sense of knowing actually who to go to, and Zacchaeus knew who to go to, that it was Jesus. So there was that, that response of welcoming him gladly. But we see another response taking place. It says this, all the people saw this, and began to mutter, he's going to be the guest of a sinner. <laughs> you see, they weren't really interested. Um, I, you know, they thought they were actually better than Zacchaeus. Um, why would Jesus want to spend time with someone like him? <coughs> but Zacchaeus, it says, stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, 
Look, Lord, here and there I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You see, it's, it wasn't just with words, but the actions here was what mattered. And for Zacchaeus, what, what took place was that Jesus said, yes, when Jesus wants to go to his house, but actually it was his heart that was changed. It was his heart that was changed. Um, and out of that transformation, there was this response and action um, where Zacchaeus actually admits, do you know what? I give half of what I have to the poor. If I've cheated anyone, I'll, I'll pay back four times. Wow, what a response. And Jesus said this to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. You see, all those around Zacchaeus thought actually they were better than Zacchaeus. But Jesus had come specifically there at that instance to meet with Zacchaeus. And to see that actually, yes, he was lost. But praise God, Zacchaeus responded um, to Jesus. And actually that response was fulfilled in action. And for each one of us, we want to respond in action to God, not just with, with words, but in our lives. And indeed, that transformation that took place, there, yeah, that transformation can take place every day in our lives if we welcome God gladly into our lives and into our hearts. Lord Jesus, Father God, thank you um, for your word. Lord, thank you, Lord, that God, um, we see um, in your words here how you changed Zacchaeus. That God, Father, you know him by name. You knew him by name. Uh, and God, you knew all about him. But God, Father, thank you that you take us as we are, but you don't leave us as we are. But that you bring transformation, you bring change into our lives. And Lord, thank you that, Lord, um, each day from glory to glory, you're changing us. But Lord, it's a process. And Lord, Father, we pray, Lord, and ask that God for each one of us here and where we are watching online, that God we would sense your presence with us, that God we would respond to you, that God we would call out to you and allow you to change us from the inside out, to transform us. So God, thank you for your patience, thank you for your love and your grace in each one of our lives. Lord, we pray, Lord, for our church family. Lord, for those who are unwell at this time, Lord, we thank you, Bill, representing those of our church family who are unwell. And we pray, Lord, for your healing touch upon each one of them. We pray, Lord, that God, they would know your peace, your presence, um, and Lord, your healing. So, God, Father, be with us in the rest of today and in this coming week. May we know you the hope of all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you um, for joining with us um, today. And just in a, in a few moments or two, um, Stuart will connect you um, in a one way um, exit system as an offering basket there as well. Um, and we pray God's blessing upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.